Okay, in this video, we are going to be using the definition of continuity, which is a function is continuous at x equals c if the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to f of c. And I should say, I got these problems from um, a college board document uh, that they kind of released during COVID. Uh, I think the, the videos and the presentation of that have kind of been lost in the shuffle, um, so I thought it'd be useful if I uh, did the problems kind of from my perspective. So let's let's check it out. Is the function j of x continuous at x equals 1? Give a reason for your answer. All right, so j of x is this piecewise function. It's m of x as long as x is uh, less than or equal to 1, and it's 2e to the x squared minus 1 as long as x is greater than 1. All right, so we need the limit as x approaches 1 to exist, and we need uh, j of 1 to exist, and we need them to be equal. So let's deal with the limit. We're going to take the limit from the left, the limit from the right, see if we get the same thing. If we do, we'll then find the value. If those are the same, we'll write our answer. So I need the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of j of x. All right, so if I'm approaching 1 from the left, that means that I'm using numbers that are less than 1. And if I'm less than 1, I must be using this branch, which means the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of j of x is the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of m of x m of x is the graph that we were given. So let's see what the limit as x approaches 1 from the left is. What you can do is you can just like trace on here if you if you want. Um, so there we go. We're approaching from the left. Uh, we get that that limit is 2 because it's the y value. So we get 2. Now we got to look from the right. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of j of x. If you're approaching 1 from the right, that's values that are bigger than 1 which means we're using the other branch. So this will be the same as the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of 2e to the x squared minus 1. 2e to the x squared minus 1 is a continuous function on its own. So we can evaluate the limit by substitution. So that'll be 2e to the 0, which is just 2 times 1, which is 2. All right, so the limit does exist because the limit from the left equals the limit from the right. But that's not enough. We also need the value of the function. So I'm going to find j of 1, but j of 1, go up to the two branches and find the one that says or equal to. So that's here. So j of 1 is actually just m of 1. I'm going to go back to the graph of m and figure out the y value at x equals 1. So here's 1, go up, the y value is 2. So now we can write our explanation. So the limit equals the value of the function. The function is continuous. So j of x is continuous at x equals 1 because the limit as x approaches 1 of j of x is equal to j of 1. That's a pretty typical problem. Uh, the next two that we do are going to be uh, similar to that, and then the one following that is going to be a little more complicated. So if you want to bounce to that because you're 100% confident on these, go ahead. Um, this is the problem we're going to do now. Is the function k of x continuous at x equals 2? Give a reason for your answer. So k of x is piecewise, it is m of x when x is less than 2, and it is p of x when x is greater than or equal to 2. All right, so we need the limit to exist, so we're going to start with that idea again. We're going to look at the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. So limit as x approaches 2 from the left of k of x, 2 from the left, number smaller than 2, which means we have to use the x is less than 2 branch. So that's going to be the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of m of x. And we just go back to our graph. We have to approach from the left, so I'm going to trace from the left until I get to 2. The logical y value at x equals 2 would be 2. Remember, it doesn't need to be there. You don't need the actual value of the function to equal that. You just need the limit to approach that. So limit definitely approaches a y value of 2. So that's 2. Let's take a look at the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of k of x. So if we're approaching from the right, that means we're thinking of values that are bigger than 2. Bigger than 2 means we need the branch where x is greater than or equal to 2. So this limit is actually the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of p of x. So let's go to the graph of p of x, and we will approach 2 from the right. So there we go. The logical y value is 1. Those are not the same. Since they are not the same, the function is not continuous, right? If the limit doesn't exist, 
then the limit can't equal the value of the function. It doesn't even matter what the value of the function is. Uh, we immediately, as soon as those were not the same, we knew that this thing was not continuous. So I'm going to write that up. And so uh, you could write this, and that's totally fine. I like to add, because I like to over-explain, I guess, um, that that, by its, uh, you know, all of that information means that the limit as x approaches 2 of k of x does not exist. So I go like that one extra step. I think it's a good practice, uh, but I think you could get away with not doing that part. You definitely need to say that the limit from the left doesn't equal the limit from the right. Okay, so this was m of x when you were less than 2 and p of x when you were greater than or equal to 2. The next problem is just going to flip those. So we're going to be p of x when you are less than or equal to 2 and m of x when you are greater to 2, greater than 2. Um, we're going to do the same thing. Look at the limit from the left, from the right. If those are the same, we will then find the value of the function. If all of those are the same, we'll say it's continuous. So let's do that. So we're going to approach 2 from the left of l of x. I don't like naming functions L because L kind of looks like a one, um, but whatever, it's the way it was given. So uh, two from the left means values less than two, which means we have to use P of X. So we're looking at the limit as X approaches two from the left of P of X. We go to the graph of P of X and we approach two from the left, so from value smaller, um, and we get a logical Y value of one. All right, let's dive in and go from the right. So same process every time. Like once you get the idea, um, you just kind of have this set procedure and you go through it. Uh, two from the right. If you're coming from the right, then you're using values bigger than two. So you need X to be greater than two. So we're on this branch. I mean, basically if there's two branches, you're gonna use one for one of the limits and one for the other. If it's at the break point, if it's not, if this is like the limit as X approaches five, um, then we would be using P of X both times. Uh, I'm sorry, M of X both times because five is greater than two. Um, but usually it's at the break point. So we're going to approach 2 from the right on m of x. There we go. The logical y value is 1. Notice m of x is not even defined at x equals 2. It doesn't matter. The limit from the left at x equals 2 does exist for m of x, and it's 2. The limit from the right as x approaches 2 does exist, and it's 1. They're not the same, so the limit for m of x doesn't exist. But that's not really relevant because we're doing piecewise functions. Um, so we got 1 both times. So now we have to find L of 1, 2, L of 2, sorry. Um, so L of 2, you go up and you look for the equality. Uh, it's right there. So that's going to be P of 2. Go to the graph of P of X. There's 2. Logical Y value, not the, the actual Y value there is 1. So they're all the same. So this is continuous. So I'm not going to make you watch me write that. L of X is continuous at X equals 2 because... The limit as x approaches 2 of L of x is equal to L of 2. All right. The next problem is going to be a little more challenging. And it's weird. So we're going to let R of x equal M of x over P, min P of 1 minus x. So that's like a composition um, when x is not 0. And then uh, R of x is equal to C when x is 0. So R of x is a piecewise function. One of the pieces is like a... I don't know, a ratio of two functions. And we want to find the value of C such that R of X is continuous at X equals zero. All right, so we know continuous means the limit exists, the function exists, the limit equals the value of the function. We're going to have to find the limit because once we know the limit, assuming that exists, we'll just set the value of the function equal to it and we'll know what C is. So this is all about finding the limit. But the limit as X approaches zero of R of X is a little complicated, right? Because it's going to be uh, really the limit as x approaches 0 of m of x divided by the limit as x approaches 0 of p of the quantity 1 minus x. Um, so that's, uh, that's, that's a lot. So we're, we're looking for the limit as x approaches 0 of r of x. And to find that, we're going to look at the limit as x approaches 0 of m of x and the limit as x approaches 0 of p of 1 minus x. So the first one we're going to do is uh, the limit as x approaches 0 of m of x. That one is not so bad. So I'm not going to like write out every individual piece of this. I'm just going to go to the graph of m of x. I'm going to approach 0 from the left, see what I get. From the right, see what I get. If they agree, I'm just going to write it. So from the left, I get a value of 0. From the right, 
I get a value of zero, so I know that that limit is zero. I don't think we need to kind of belabor that point. The next one, I think we do need to belabor, and that's because it's a little more complicated. So we want the limit as x approaches zero, p of one minus x. What is happening there? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually draw a graph of y equals one minus x. And as we develop this, you'll maybe get an idea of why I'm doing that. Um, so here's my graph. Well, here's part of it. There we go. All right, so as x approaches zero from the left of one minus x, so x is approaching zero from the left, the value of one minus x is approaching one, but through uh, numbers that are bigger than one, right? Like we are decreasing to one. So uh, you get like 1.1, 1.01, 1.001, you're approaching one, but you're approaching it actually from the right. So this is approaching one, but from the right, right? Because you can think of it as from the right, or you can think of it as from above. I feel like both of those kind of like indicate that you should put a little plus there. Um, so as x approaches zero from the left, one minus x is approaching one from the right. That's gonna be important. Sort of similarly, as x approaches zero from the right, one minus x, approaches one, but from below, which means a little negative. So that'll be one from the left or from below. All right, now why am I doing that? I'm doing this because I need to figure out the limit as x approaches zero from the left of this composition. So when you have a composition, you need to figure out what's happening on the inside of the limit and kind of rewrite the limit. So I'm gonna do basically a u substitution where u is equal to one minus x. So if we're looking at x approaches zero from the left for p of one minus x, that's the same as the limit as u approaches one from the right of p of u. I'm just letting u equal one minus x. So if x approaches zero from the left, u approaches one from the right. So the limit as x approaches zero from the left of p of one minus x is the same as the limit as u approaches one from the right of p of u. So then I just go to my graph and I say, what is happening on the graph of p as the variable approaches one from the right. Well, that graph is approaching zero. Okay, then we gotta do the other one. So the limit as x approaches zero from the right of p of one minus x. So we're dealing with this composition again. So I'm basically doing a u substitution where u is equal to one minus x. If x approaches zero from the right for one minus x, one minus x approaches one from the left. So this will become the limit as u approaches one from the left of p of u. We go to our graph of p and we let our variable approach one, but from the left. And we can see that we get a value again of zero. Well, that means that the limit as x approaches zero overall of p one minus x, p of one minus x, is zero, right? Because the limit from the left and the right are equal. All right, why are we doing this? We are doing this because we're looking for the limit as x approaches zero of r of x, and we now know that that, by kind of like direct substitution, um, gives us zero over zero. And since it gives us zero over zero, we're gonna use L'Hopital's rule. So, I'm gonna say, by L'Hopital's rule, I often abbreviate that as just la hope. La hop, I don't know how you want to say it. Um, the limit as x approaches zero of r of x is the limit as x approaches zero of, all right, so L'Hopital's rule. Uh, if you get zero over zero, you're gonna do the derivative of the top. So the derivative of m of x is m prime of x. That's just the slope of m of x, right? Um, so it's m prime of x over the derivative of the bottom. Uh, the bottom requires a chain rule, right? Because it's gonna be p prime of one minus x times the derivative of one minus x. The derivative of one minus x is negative one. So I'm gonna write negative p prime of one minus x. All right, so let's see if we can work out these values. Uh, m prime of x, basically at x equals zero, right? Because we need to look as x approaches zero. Um, zero is on this little line segment here. Um, and that line segment has a slope of two, so m prime of zero is definitely two. 
And if you approach from the left or the right, you're going to get two either way. So that's going to be two. Now, what is happening with this other part? Well, P prime of one minus X. Uh, so P, P prime of one minus X as X approaches zero should be P prime of one, right? So let's take a look at that. So one falls on this line segment. This line segment has a slope of one. So we're doing negative the slope at one. I'm sorry, yeah, negative the slope at one, which is one, so negative one. All right, so overall, the limit as x approaches zero of r of x is negative two. I hope I explained that clearly. Uh, I don't know that I actually did. Uh, so if x is approaching zero, one minus x is also is approaching one, right? If x is approaching zero, one minus x is approaching one. P prime of one is definitely one. And if you're approaching one from the left or the right, you're still gonna get one because that entire line segment has a slope of one. So we're just doing negative times that slope, which is one, so negative one. Um, so that's where we are, two over negative one. I don't know, maybe I did explain it the right way, or maybe I just said exactly the same thing again. It's hard to say. Anyway, we know the limit as x approaches zero of r of x is negative two. And then we just go back and think we're trying to make, uh, what are we trying to do? Find the value of c such that r of x is continuous. Well, continuous uh, would mean that uh, the limit equals the value of the function. So if we're gonna be continuous at x equals zero, we need the limit as x approaches zero of r of x to equal r of zero. So now the question is, what is r of zero? Because we know the limit is negative two. R of zero, if you go back to the definition, is just C. So that's equal to C. So if the limit is negative two, and R of zero is C, and we need those to be equal, then we know that C must equal negative two. So that one's a little more complicated. Maybe it's a lot more complicated. Uh, it required L'Hopital's, and L'Hopital's requires a little special care. Um, but anyway, I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.